games, and then it's all down to points difference. So France have to win this game, but they have to win it by as many points as possible. Because when you start looking at those quarterfinal draws, whether you came first or second in your pool can be critically important and decide whether you have a good weekend or one you will want to forget. The teams for Ireland and France was Ireland getting up late over Scotland in their opening match early on in the day. And well, it was interesting to note in that first match, the likes of Billy Dardis, Harry McNulty all started on the bench, not this time for the Irish. Those big guns there, and of course, are able to bring the likes of Jordan Conroy off the bench. So lots of options for Ireland, who, well, they really have been such a great success story. They've come as a core team in the last few years. Fourth last week in Singapore, wouldn't they love to get on the podium as well? And of course, they're always well supported too. So Ireland against France too continue the Pool D action, crucially important in that race for quarterfinal spots. Yeah, the Irish have really grown over the years. I remember when they first came in for a London Sevens as, as an invitational team. Really impressed. That it unfortunately, knocked us off in the quarterfinal, um, which will be one... So was, not that impressive then. Yeah, impressed us, I guess. One to forget. Um, but now how they built the consistency. It's gone from, okay, they can perform for a one-off weekend, but now they're starting to inch into, okay, now they can hang with those yeah, top right. teams yep. weekend after weekend. And that's really what it takes to succeed on the World Series. And it's something that's hard to build and hard to get right from day one. It's wonderful, that London tournament. Finish with a bronze medal. Paul D. Vitally important matchup. France against Ireland. From the Canada. Come on. France through the boot of Uruguay. Knocked away on their side and knocked on, in fact, by in Ireland. Oh, so it'll be a French feed to the scrum to start us off. A little bit of chaos. I don't know if it's just me, but it seems so like off the kickoffs so far today, there have been more of these infractions, and we have been going down for scrums more immediately. So, But all the teams, really, we've seen so far, not being quite so clean on kickoffs, both with the chase and the receipt. So that'll be something to watch out for. The teams that are able to execute and are able to retain their possession at a higher level will have more success. This turf newly laid in the last month or so. He's getting used to that, of course, as now... France set away a really good chance for them to attack early and get wide early to Nelson Epe and around the outside just puts the foot down, pedal to the middle, around the corner and France do strike straight away through Nelson Epe. Nelson Epe he started off the first game with a very, very similar try, just saying, I am faster than you, I am going to run around you. No, no footwork or anything, he just put his hammer down and went for it and a great try from Epe. He starts off the game at a quite a clip. Must be the nicest feeling, isn't it? You just know, you're like, yeah, I know I've got the gas on you and to back yourself to do it time and again. Epe really impress impressing for France over this season. And he's really come out of nowhere to be a standout performer and it's gonna be great to see how he continues to develop, continues to add skills to his game and show that he can do this in the first minute, but he can also do it at the end of the game. Let's see how the kickoff goes this time for Iragua. Goes a little bit longer and overcooks it. So too shallow, now too long. And it'll be a scrum on halfway. Or option on halfway for Ireland. And for France, that's just so disappointing. You've just scored a fantastic try at the beginning of the game. And now you've handed all that momentum, all that kind of energy to Ireland. You said, okay, and Ireland are able to get the match under control and build into it now. Here come Ireland, Gavin Mullen just flicks a little ball for McNulty. And Ireland, well, they know their game so well. Trying to get the likes of that man, Terry Kennedy, into the action. Ball goes to ground, though, and oh, it's risky to try to flick it back in field, but it had gone out over the sideline. So breaks down for Ireland. Another good field position here for France to work from. Unfortunate basic error from Ireland. They have had time, they had hands on the ball. They, all they had to do was pass the ball out wide. Um, no real pressure from the French and skills breaking down when you're not under pressure is even more disappointing than when you are under pressure. Pinpoint throw from Iragua to Lugiel. And now they switch back to the right again. And here is Lugiel. Coming back in field for France. Seth and that just breaks down too. So both teams 
is guilty of a few errors at the moment. A little bit sloppy. It was a nice set please play from France, though. I am, they used Dardis as the sweeper to plug holes in that back line. So France realizing that if they move the ball to the midfield and then shift it back, once Dardis is left, there is an overload that you do have that extra man in the 15-meter channel. But again, that's when the skills break down. You've got one offload, that goes to hand. The second offload as the, as the Irish defenders start to converge. That's the even more difficult one. And that's the one where you've got to be really sure that you can get it to the guy's hand. Because if you don't, you can take it in, you can take the contact. And he's, there, he's right there to clear over you. Here is Billy Dardis, the Set. Ireland skip with a French backpack on him at the moment. Hassled at the back and is able to clear away and gets a good oh, good ball for Mullen. Just losing the footing a little. Kennedy. Ducking in. Please, under one. Please. Liz Kelly. Kennedy again. Goes in and plays half back. Now Dardis scoots around the outside. Player down and back play for Ireland. As France try and swarm through, but Kennedy's done well. I think that's Gavin Mullen that might be down and back play for Ireland. They will continue to play on, and France will get the penalty. No, definitely. And, yeah, they're going to have to stop play here, unfortunately. Yeah, it was Gavin Mullen as he was coming in on that hard line off the scrum. Um, just lost his footing, and it looked kind of just like kind of gave away under him. So that's a concerning one. We hope he's okay. And the Irish, once you've lost a player to injury, it's always so tough because you're like, we don't want to give the ball away, obviously, but how do we get into our attack with a number down? And so you've got to go through phases, see if you can break anything down. It's unfortunate for Mullen. Yeah, just buckled in underneath him a little bit. He's going to be up, but they're going to make some changes. Silent. Certainly see Jordan Conroy standing by. And Hugo Lennox coming onto the field here is the speedster with silky skills. Jordan Conroy. Conroy. And it's going to go onto the field as well. Or is he not? <laughs> you just wait. <laughs> Hugo Lennox has gone out there for Ireland to replace Gavin Mullen. Certainly we wish him well. Just take a step for me. Take a step. Come on. So here go France through William Aragua. Gets the ball again. This is where they've had good success down this right side so far. Grand Didier goes to ground. And now through the hands for Logel. Wide, wide they go, France. And just steaming onto that ball is Epe again. He scored one on the right. Have one on the left too, Nelson Epe. I really liked how the French, they hit onto the ball very hard there in midfield, and that just attracts the attention of the Irish defender. And then as the ball's in the air, that was Ryan Rabage. He just hit onto the ball there, and that meant the Irish defenders started to just look at him. And once that ball's in the air, Epe is able to slide onto it, and he's in space on the catch. So really effective there from the French. What, if you've got to hit onto the ball, because you, you have the defense starting to look at you, rather than just being able to sit back, watch, and wait for Epe to get the ball in his hands. They timed the run to perfection too, so Nelson Epe has a double. Ireland with some problems. They haven't really had enough hands on ball themselves yet. So the conversion goes away. Ten points to nil. See hobbling ever so slightly there. Still out on the field though. As Ireland bring that restart down. And Jack Kelly. Release. And McNulty. There's Lennox, a new man onto the field spun across hard by mcdonald to kennedy 28 tries this season and a running battle with corey soul from australia at the moment the two of them just ahead is kennedy with that one this morning stepping and weaving his dardis lennox again wide once more good hands down low from kennedy who now puts a foot down he's got conroe with him couldn't quite get it away great sliding cover defense Coming across by the French, but Ireland keep moving forward, recycling nicely. Dardis in the middle. And now McDonald drives the legs, pumping hard, bringing in French defenders with him. McNulty clears away once more for Lennox. It's been a good injection from him. And now here's Kennedy. Tackle made around the waist. But Conroy on the ball, back inside. He's only been on the field for 30-odd seconds. And he gets another ball dotted down, as he does at Will Jordan Conroy. 
Jordan Conroy, a try scoring machine, and it's a partnership with Terry Kennedy. They're so effective together. Kennedy slides through the hole, draws defenders, and Conroy knows exactly what, he's, what he needs to do and exactly who he needs to feed off uh, and able to catch the ball and has that nose for the try line. He knows where it is at all times and knows what he needs to do to get there. Yeah, such a good understanding, isn't it? It's like the core of this island squad has really stayed together now for a good few years. As I said earlier, they know their game well. And the conversion good too. So getting right back into it on the stroke of half time as Ireland. Time for the restart still. Oh, and Conroy. So got the great footwork. And on the D floor as well. Restart is a good one and it's backwards. It's landed well for Ireland. And McDonald. Good drive again from Kelly Dean. Good purchase up the middle from some of their big guys island at the moment, and that allows them to spread wide for their flyers. Release! Release! France defence called out of play. Again, the support play is good. Lennox again for McNulty across the face this time for Kelly. Just breaks down, but the bounce is kind. Oh, pops a lovely little ball around the corner for Terry Kennedy. He had no right to get it away. Kennedy stayed on the shoulder. And another one into the books for Terry Kennedy. And Ireland go in front. I thought the Irish had wasted the chance there. Simple hands would have done. But with two French defenders hanging off him, able to get the offload. I mean, that's, that's such a big skill when you've got guys hanging off you. Being able to get your arms free and stay in control of that arm and find your, defend, find your supporting attacker is so important. No conversion this time, but what a score. He's got plenty, racking them up at will this season. And he's put Ireland in front. They go to the break, 12 points to 10 ahead of France. I guess for Ireland, I'll be able to have a listen in here, but perhaps the starts. we had a couple of slow starts. And the French, apologies for the language. Vociferous chat in the French channel as well. Paul and Viva having words with his team. It can be so difficult in those halftime huddles. You might have just come in, your heartbeat is going at a million miles an hour. You're trying to get that under control. You've got someone talking to you. You're trying to interpret that. You might have something to say yourself. And, and so it makes it really difficult to get those complex messages out. But you see certain teams are able to do that more effectively than others. Transmit those messages that some people are seeing, get on the same page and really change in the second half. Uh, and teams that are able to do that more effectively it makes such a big difference i think we see that some teams have a bigger performance in the second half because of that come on restart is about the perfection of 11 meters and quickest to the loose ball again is island and then lands to the hands of France and oh spinning and weaving away Grandidier the footwork the magic and Ireland initially I thought from that restart had the ball in hand France though make them pay through Aaron Grandidier straight after the halftime hooter that is just the words that would have been said on that huddle yeah, I can't think they'd have scripted anything quite that effective, but really well done from France. And they started off, off the first half very well. They've started off the second half very well. And for the Irish, they didn't really get into that first half until the last 45 seconds or so. So they, it's not the way they would have wanted to finish. Now it's this kickoff. The French, both of their kickoffs in that first half, they immediately gave possession to Ireland, either through a knock-on or an out on the full. So really important that this kickoff is effective, is in a good position, uh, and they're able to get into the game. France go back in front through Aaron Condidier. 
That one is not quite going to 10 okay. metres. I feel like we're saying the same thing over and over with every restart, Madison. Island go quickly, though, this time, trying to catch them on the hop. It's Kennedy out wide, just has to cut back and field, looking for Sissom Port as he was surrounded by blue jerseys. It's slow ball this time for Conroy. And now they're able to spin, come back to this left again. Here's Conroy, who's just going to try and accelerate through the gap. But this time the connection with Kennedy isn't there. Intercepted by Blondidier, and now Veragua goes to ground. Uh-oh, here's trouble for Ireland. Scooting down the short side, there's not a green jersey in sight. They're going to try and at least keep him away. And now, yeah, there's a little bit more acceleration from Nelson Epic. It's a gallant chase, but it is one that is an absolute vein. It just opened up for the flyer again. You cannot keep him quiet. Nelson Epic, hat-trick for the match. Epe just spotting the little gapper on the breakdown. This was the Irish possession earlier. So he, uh, yeah, turns it over, the loose pass, uh, and then the, the French around the breakdown. Just look at a little bit of confusion, getting in each other's way. And Epe, one, with distance in front of him, there are a few players on the series who are, who are going to be able to chase him down from behind. And he uses just enough pace, but no more than he needs to get there. Well, it was a valiant effort from Andrew Smith. But I feel like Nelson Epe was possibly taunting him a bit. It's like, I know you're not going to catch me. He had the smile on his face from... 60 odd meters out as it opened up in front of him and this is a good advantage now for france 22 points to 12. conroy is space for him now conroy they've worked it down the left gets rid of one and a covering defense comes across really well from Schubalt. And it'll be French ball, a wonderful cover defence. They lost it on the ground, but Conroy almost away and then brought down at the 11th hour. Yeah, Conroy in space, and you think he's going to be able to go the whole way, but it's actually this first defender just able to cause enough of a hitch that I think he then couldn't quite get up enough pace, able to slow him down uh, and knocking the ball on in contact, and that could be a big moment. We saw it in the first half. France scored two tries early, then the Irish came back at the end of the, the half. France scored two tries early in the second half, and now it's on the Irish. Can they do the same thing again? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Bit, they might be a bit back concerned on, going forward, Crouch. just how they started each match and, and come out of the gates Fine. after the half. They've still got time here, though, just over Six. three minutes to play in this Paul D encounter. France. We try and build through another try score has gone. Did he? And here's the fumble. Here's the error that Ireland were looking for. Well, oh, sure, Barlard made the oh, great right. tackle over here to stop Cornery, and then just can't believe he lost the handle on it. Come off, please. That's certainly going to help the Irish. You give them possession 20 meters out. There's two and a half minutes left in this game, and that's certainly enough time for, the come, for them to come back uh, and, and grab the lead if they're able to score here. So, big moment here for Ireland. They can get something going off this scrum, and right hand scrums are harder to attack off than left hand scrums. So it's easier for the French to defend, but still a lot on here for the Irish with their backs out wide, especially look for Kennedy and Conroy to get something going. Mark Roach has come on for the skip. Billy Dardis has gone to the sideline. And here come Ireland looking for Kennedy. There's Lennox ducks in underneath one, lays it back. Oh, good counter ruck though, comes through from France and really disrupts Ireland. They're going to have to be physically strong here, but just held on too long. That was good physical stuff from Fair France to win up. that back. Man on the ground. Really well done from the French. They came up with good line speed, forced Irish to cut back, and then really attacked both of those kind of pseudo pseudo rucks that were the half and one after the other, getting numbers physically through. And you saw they won the initial point of contact. So the Irish oh defender, his body position got very high, and that allowed the supporting French defenders to get in and drive with all their body weight through the point of contact. Great clearance downfield too. This makes them 10 metres inside the Irish half. And France will be looking for one that might be the final nail here if they can Come score the off this Green, possession. The line. Short and quick. They go. Mazzolini through the hands. And now back up through no, the there, middle. And I'm trying to win this ball back. Can't do so at that time. Ua. You're offside, you never retreat. Oh, and the face. penalty against Ireland. So France just walking offside, to retreated. set this penalty. In absolutely no rush at all. Wouldn't surprise me if they went for the line out just to take another 15 or second, 15 seconds or so off the clock. And with a two try gap, that's really important. Irish Ireland have to score twice. So 
if they score in 45 Boys. seconds, there won't be enough time for the second. So it incentivized the French to slow it down, take 30 seconds off the clock here if they can, and the referee, Jordan Way, will have to be on the watch for that. Oh, look up. Oh, look up. Jonathan Logiel, the most kept French player, heads okay. to the Tell bench. Me when you're ready, I'll call Tom on. Ready? Tom on, let's go. <laughs> and they're now told to get a wriggle on front here. Clock starts again. One way, then the other. Matalini again. Now, looking to spread. Boucher and Truebal very close to that sideline. They've kept it in really well, although, oh, gee, hands on the ball. Yeah, thought hands on the ball, and Mazzolini had his foot in touch, just didn't quite have the awareness, but the assistant referee absolutely did. No quick, no quick, no quick. Yeah, it's, it's careless and unnecessary from the French. You, like, you've got to be smarter than that. It might not come back to cost them in this one, but approaching the end of the game, stay in bounds. You don't have to score, you just got to stay on field. Ireland, time to get one back. Probably not two. Kennedy is rounded upon by a swarm of blue jerseys. It's the French defence has, oh, they scored some wonderful tries, has come to the fore in the second half really well have muscled up big time just have not allowed Ireland to get going in the second spell and the steal as well wonderfully done Yoris, and they'll get one more to finish too well France a draw in the first match they went to sleep a wee bit in that one not so much today Joachim Trobal gets the final score for the French but it was set up once more by that physical defence Really good try from the French. Their defense has really impressed me in this one, especially their counter-rucking in the second half has really come to the fore. They've been putting numbers through and driving. And as we said earlier, they drew their first game with Argentina. Every point is important. That try could be the difference between topping the pool and coming second. Really good win for France. So both of these teams with wins so far today, but France putting Ireland away thanks to the hat-trick of the flyer. Nelson FA, 27 points to 12.